Welcome to this lecture on the basics of defined benefit pensions. A lot of you have probably thought about the problem of your own saving for your own retirement in, say, 401k plans. But another form of retirement benefit is a monthly payment provided by an employer to a worker that begins when that worker retires. This is called a defined benefit, or DB pension, because the monthly retirement benefit the employee receives is defined and known in advance. Who has DB pensions in the U.S.? The latest data tell us that only about 17% of private sector employees participate in DB pension plans. In contrast, 78% of state or local government employees, and also many federal government employees, participate in DB plans. If we contrast this to defined contribution, or DC plans, such as the 401k, we see that private sector employees are much more likely to participate in a DC plan. Over 40% of them do whereas only 15% of public sector employees participate in DC plans. We can also compare this to access figures, that is, who has access to these plans and who participates. Just about everyone who has access to a DB plan seems to participate in it. They seem to think it's a good deal. On the other hand, if all private sector workers with access to DC plans participate in those plans, there would be DC participation rates of closer to 60% as opposed to 40%. Now at this point, some small group of you is saying, great, I'm involved in a DB plan, I have one, so this is right up my alley. Others of you might be saying, I don't have a DB pension, so why should I care? Well, if you are a US citizen, your federal, state, and possibly local government employs people, and in most cases, offers them DB pensions. That means that actually you employ them and offer DB pensions. So if you're a taxpayer, it's going to be important to understand these arrangements since you, as the employer, are also offering them to your employees. One way to begin to think about the DB plans, whether you're one of the citizens who has one or whether you're one of the citizens who, as a taxpayer, offers one to government employees, is to imagine that you wanted to try to pay yourself a DB pension when you retire. Say you have something like $30,000 per year. Well, you might start out by imagining that you could just save in your 401k. And then, when you retire, you could buy an annuity from an insurance company. But if you invest in risky assets in the 401k, you have no way of guaranteeing yourself any particular level of benefit, because you don't know how these risky assets are going to perform. Even if you had been investing in risk-free assets in your 401k, you couldn't have known what interest rates would be when you retire. So for example, arriving at retirement with a balance of, say, $500,000, that would allow you to provide a much higher stream of monthly consumption for yourself if interest rates are 10% when you get there than if they are 1%. The only way you could pay yourself a guaranteed benefit at retirement would have been to buy yourself a deferred annuity, a financial product that gives you a stream of fixed or an index stream of payments beginning at some future date. So thinking about it from the perspective of an employee who has one of these DB plans, a DB pension eliminates a lot of the uncertainty. However, on the other side of the coin is that the employer must figure out how to provide this guaranteed stream of payments. The savings and investment problem for how to do that is now in the hands of the employer, not the employee. And this highlights one crucial difference between the employer's problem, preparing to provide DB payments for employees in retirement, and the employee's problem if, if he or she is saving in a 401k or other type of plan for his or her own retirement. As an individual or household, if you decide to invest in risky assets in your 401k, well, you can scale up or down your consumption in retirement if the assets perform better or worse than you expect. If the assets perform really well in your 401k, well, maybe you can buy that boat you always wanted without scaling back your lifestyle in other ways. If the assets perform poorly, you might not only be unable to buy the boat, you might have to downsize your apartment and spend less money going out to dinner. So if your 401k assets don't do well, you basically just pay yourself a smaller consumption stream in retirement. In contrast, if you, as a taxpayer and employer of public employees, are sponsoring a DB plan that invests in risky assets, and those assets do not perform as hoped for or expected, you, the employer, still has to provide the same consumption stream. The employer in a traditional DB plan cannot tell the employees, sorry, the assets did poorly, so I'm scaling back your pension. Doing that would be a violation of the contract between the employer and the employee. 
and it would be viewed as a default on an obligation, a default that could only be legal, perhaps, if the employer entered some kind of legal bankruptcy proceedings. More on that later. So if the employee is expecting a pension that would allow her to, say, buy a boat, whether a small one or a large one, and the assets in the employer's DB pension fund perform less than expectations, the employee does not have to scale back her plans to buy the boat. The employer, or you, the taxpayer, must come up with the money, one way or another. If it's a government, then out of increased revenue or spending cuts. In addition to sponsoring government employee pensions, one other area where many people have exposure to DB pension risk is through the shares of stock that you invest in. While only 17% of private sector employees participate in DB plans, there are still many companies that are carrying around legacy DB promises, those older promises that they owe to older active employees and retirees, and in some cases, even offering to new employees. If the firm finds itself having a shortfall in the assets required to pay, to pay the pensions, then that shortfall must come out of corporate profits, and hence out of shareholder value. So if you have a DB plan, if you're in one, then this lecture should be helpful for understanding what benefits you are entitled to. If you do not have a DB plan, then this lecture should help you understand the nature of the DB promises you have implicitly made to others, either as a taxpayer or a shareholder. Whether you know it or not, you are an employer who offers employees DB pension plans. That means that you have to instruct your delegates, particularly city councils and state legislatures, to make decisions about various aspects of the DB pension contract. And you need to understand what pensions you owe contractually for every employee today, as well as what pensions you're likely to owe given the probability that your workforce will continue to earn pension rights in the future. And you shouldn't just assume that someone else is gonna do this work for you in a way that represents your best interests. Maybe they will, but maybe they won't.